You're now tuned in to Life Song Radio, a weekly podcast dedicated to accurately studying the Word of God in a comprehensive and biblical manner. Listen in as host Phil Ramsey and Blake Shankel dig into the Word line by line, verse by verse, leaving no stone unturned. Grab your Bible and your notebook and get prepared to study the living, breathing, active Word of God. Now, here are your hosts of Life Song Radio. Hello and welcome to another episode of Life Song Radio. My name is Blake Shankel, and along with me is Mr. Phil Ramsey. Mr. Phil. Greetings. Yes, sir. How you doing? You like that? I did. That was good. Let's good. do that every time. Oh, greetings, sir. <laughs> I hope I don't offend somebody. I feel like in every, I feel like we offend somebody with something like every time, every week. But no, good to see you. Good to see you. How you? Have your week been well? Been good. Been good. Uh, rejoicing in the Lord. Rejoicing in the Lord. It's uh, it's uh, again, again. I say rejoice. Okay. <laughs> we'll hit that today. That, that's that's pretty pretty big. Yeah. Uh, part of today's show actually yeah, absolutely you've been on the road a lot i've talked to you a couple of times and how, how many podcasts have you listened to <laughs> is your brain fried yeah is it yeah yeah no it's uh, i love listening to podcasts i love the as far as i love driving you know and just mm. listening to these podcasts but it's not just a, a lot of podcasts a lot of sermons uh, i would say just our to our listeners if you like to listen to really good sound doctrine biblical Christ exalting, God honoring sermons. Grace to you has a podcast. They, in fact, it's not a their podcast. It's really just them. They're recording their sermons and they put it up there. Yeah. It's called the Grace Pulpit, and I love it, man. Yeah. I just I just grow through it so much. I send it to you a lot. Yeah. You know, if I, I hear something, it's almost it's funny. You know, it's like, hey, send me something you hear. You know, that's good. Mm-hmm. Well, every one of them I hear is good. Yeah, I know. So I send them to you. They, they do what we do. We just kind of go through the scriptures, you yeah. know, and just so. I think it's a good way to do it. I it know, is. I know I grow tremendously Absolutely. when well, we do that. Romans 12 today. Back in Romans 12. Yep. And, and it's it's interesting as we just we just pick these verses off and we're, and we're going slow through them, but yet they're just, they're, they're small little fragments that Paul is exhorting us as believers to uh, what our life looks like and under this big heading of love, right? Let love be genuine. And then he kind of just goes down from there of how that looks and mm-hmm. what are our, the virtues of, of the Christian life. And ultimately, like you talked about last week, <clears throat> it all ties to back being a living sacrifice and a, and a, a worship that is worthy of God, right? Our, our worship that is honorable, as he says, our uh, verse 1 of chapter 12, which is your spiritual service of worship, mm-hmm. right? And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So uh, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So these things just fall up under that, what it looks like. And we're just picking them off. And, and this verse today, Romans 12, 12, it, in fact, I was telling you before we started that he breaks it down. Again, it breaks down into three yep. parts. And I said, he Paul would be a great Southern Baptist preacher. Yes, he would. Right? If he could uh, uh, alliterate it, it'd be mm-hmm. wonderful. I, I'm just not good, very good at alliteration, but Paul breaks it down into three sections, much like verse 11, too. So I'm going to read that. You want to read that, verse 12, Phil? Yeah. Before we do, we're going to see several things. I'm going to ask you a question. As a Christian, uh should we expect trials? Aren't trials or tribulation a mark of maybe something we're not doing right? No. Okay, so you're saying as a Christian, we should expect a trial, trials, tribulations, suffering. Absolutely. Right? So if somebody says something opposite, I was, I was watching YouTube. It's actually been several weeks ago. There was a, a well-known pastor who who was saying since Christ lived on the earth and he suffered for us and he was persecuted for us and he went through many trials for us, right? If he's done all of that, then we shouldn't have to. And hmm. if, if we do, he said, who, who would want what we have? If we're walking around uh, in trials and tribulations and suffering and poor and sick, who wants that? Yeah. He said, Christ did all of that. Wow. So why should we have to? I ain't going to do it. I got one problem with that. Yeah. Just one. It just does not line up with scripture sure at does. all. Uh, false teacher. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't line up with yeah. not only the life of Paul, not only the life of Peter, but John, all the apostles, every one of them died other than uh, as far as per- uh, far as uh, being beheaded or crucified or some type of cruel act. And then John being uh, exiled on the Isle of Patmos. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Many, many, many 
Christians through the centuries, through the years, have been persecuted for the name of Christ. Yeah. And it's coming. He, In fact, he tells us that. You yeah. will be persecuted. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Well, Paul Paul talks about it, and we're going to expound upon that. But read our verse here today, and it'll help a little bit back, better with our context. I will, uh, as we do always, let's start back with nine. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in, in zeal, but be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Read This is today's verse 12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Hmm. And so these things that we're seeing here, they, this is us living out the Christian life. Ephesians 2, you know, chapter t- uh, 2, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. These are the things that we're we're walking in. Philippians 2.12 says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence, but but much more in my absence. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like how you, you want your kids to do it, right? Yeah. I know you do what you're supposed to around me, yeah. but when I'm gone, even more, you keep doing yeah, that. So absolutely. anyway, he, he keeps going in my presence, but much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to both will mm-hmm. and to work for his good pleasure. So we have salvation, but now what are we going to do because we have it? We're going to work it out. Yeah. And so we're working it out today in verse 12. Well, it's it's interesting. And so what Paul says is, is our first heading, if you want to break it down in three portions here, the first thing we see is, is he says rejoice. Mm-hmm. Rejoice in hope. And my, yours says rejoice in hope. Mine says rejoicing in hope. All right? This, this, this onward going, present tense, continually happening is that we are to continually rejoice in hope. And I can't help but... Uh, harken back, you've already read Philippians, but I can't help but harken back to that book, yeah. the book of joy, the book of rejoicing. In fact, that is one of Paul's themes as he writes the letter to Philippi, the church of Philippi. That is his theme here is is to rejoice and hope. And, 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 it, and Paul's joy, Phil, Paul's rejoicing, it wasn't tied to his circumstances by no means, because if you looked at his circumstances, he was writing this from prison. Mm-hmm. And he was being dogged by some people that were saying, "Man, who are who is this man? What are you, what kind of what a, kind of preaching is this man doing?" He was dogged by those that are the Judaizers, right? He, he was constantly uh, uh, criticized in chapter one of that that letter. But Paul says in verse eighteen of chapter one, "Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and provisions of the Spirit of Jesus Christ." Paul had rejoicing in that. He was glad when the gospel was proclaimed with authority. And guess what? It no matter who 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 brought it, no matter yeah. who received it, nobody. It was people bringing the gospel that hated Paul. He was like, "I'm rejoicing in that that the word of God is being being heralded." And so, um, uh, as Paul stated in in verse twelve of chapter two, he goes on that we are to work out, like you said, work our salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, and he says here, "Do all things without grumbling or disputing." That that's the op that's mm-hmm. the opposite of rejoicing. Uh, and, and he says, so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent. Children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world. Philippians says, uh, Paul says in Philippians 3, 1, finally, my brethren, what? Rejoice in the Lord. And in fact, our, we're going to be preaching from this verse here. Our pastor will be at Philippians 4, 4. We've already said it. We opened up with it. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say, Rejoice. Great song, by the way. It is, and it's a, uh, it's actually a command. And, and, That's and good. What, what Blake said, we're going to probably say this several times in today's program, because for me, this is the big takeaway. Paul rejoiced. He was facing death. He didn't know what was coming, mm-hmm. but he rejoiced apart from his current situations. Yes. So, can the believer today? Can a, the believer? Here's the key. Can you rejoice if you're eat up with disease? Can you rejoice if uh, you lost your job? Can you rejoice if your world is around you is 
uh, crumbling. Can you do that? Absolutely. Absolutely, because your your joy, your rejoicing isn't tied into circumstances. Your your rejoicing is tied into in who God is. And he and he has some promises that aren't that aren't hope so's, but are yeah. Yeah, when you see that and yeah. we'll talk about that. Well, in fact, in fact, in he in, in says in Rome in Philippians, this right before this in chapter three, he says, This is why we can hope, first of all. He says, for our citizenship is in heaven. Yeah. It's not here upon this earth where temporal things will be burned up, right? In the fiery trial, these things will be burned up on judgment day. These these things that we build with hay and stubble, right? He, these things are going to be burned up. But our, 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 we wait, eagerly wait for Savior Jesus Christ. And then going forward of verse 4 of chapter 4, Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And then he gives the reason why. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men, for the Lord is near. Mm. There's the reason because we're looking, the Lord is near. He's coming back. Our hope is not in this earth. Our hope, we rejoice in something that's not here. We were looking mm. for the prize of heaven. We're looking. We're Our necks are eagerly straining for that. We're like a runner who is forward leaning at all times running that track we're not found flopping and floundering upon the track of our christian life right we're constantly rejoicing in this hope uh and when he he says in romans 12 12 rejoice in hope we rejoice because we have hope that's just it romans 8 24 for in hope we have been saved but hope that is seen is not hope for who hopes for what he already sees but if we hope for what we do not see with perf- perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. Mm, that's that's our hope is what we're eagerly waiting for. And that's our glorification. And that is us to be face to face with Jesus Christ. So our, our rejoicing is, is, is grounded in a hope. Yes. And a hope of something Look, we have, we have so much now as believers, right? We have so much, but we also have a future. So our rejoicing is is grounded in the future. We know what do we know about the future? What's going to happen? Yeah, Christ is coming He's back. He's coming back. You know, you go back to we came out of Romans eight verses what twenty nine and thirty. Yeah, there there's a sequence here that that ends in glorification. Yeah. that's in as we as we live our lives going through these these trials and tribulations and suffering. We can do that because our hope is in that, and that hope is a Sure hope. Yeah. If I said, Blake, we're gonna, I'm going to leave the studio tonight. I've got a about a half tank of gas. Man, I hope I make it home yeah. and don't run out. Now, there, now, when I say that, there's a possibility that I'm going to run out of gas. Yeah, there's a hope so. There. There's a hope so. No, but with Christ, mm. this hope so is a sure so. Yeah. He is yeah. coming, and we can endure what we're going through because actually these trials and tribulations – have a purpose. They sure do, and it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna, and we're gonna we're gonna get into that yeah. here. But I want I want to make that I want to hammer that home there. What you just said. Our present circumstances can't remove the rejoicing because our present circumstances can't, in the long run, impact that hope. That was what Paul he says. These present circumstances that I'm going through, they don't impact my hope. First Peter to to the the to the believers. Uh, that are being that are being uh, dogged by Nero. It, it, your present circumstances they don't impact your hope at all. The hope of future glory and salvation is able to animate our rejoicing, even in the midst of the most real and severe and overwhelming trials in our life. If our ultimate hope was derived from even the desire that bad situations we are in now will eventually become good in the long run in our lives, we couldn't rejoice in all circumstances because not all our bad situations are going to turn to good. We can't make that promise. We can't make that you're going to come out of that trial. Make that promise there. Right? We, we can't do that. Not all our bad circumstances that we're in now are going to be good. There are going to be some things that will never be rectified in our life. Mm-hmm. But that hope of glory enables us to rejoice in every circumstance. And that's why Paul says we are rejoicing constantly, presently, mm-hmm. continually. Nonstop. Nonstop. I don't know who Rob Morgan is, but I read this today. I hope he's a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I think he is. Okay. Uh, it says, uh, when we can't rejoice in circumstances, we can rejoice in the anticipation of what God is going to do with them, in them, through them, mm-hmm. despite of them. 
because of them on cloudy days the sun s-u-n still shines as brightly as ever in the center of the solar system and when we rejoice in hope we're saying despite our current situations our current conditions the sun s-o-n is shining for me as brightly as ever with healing in his rays that's amazing yeah that's that's uh so there's purpose look here look here there's check this out there's when you know the sovereignty of God in mm. dire situations, and when I say dire, I'm talking maybe death. Yeah. Death, premature, we would say prematurely. Yeah. Maybe as a young child, maybe. Right. Uh, Cancer. We just don't know. We don't know. But wouldn't it be really sad to tell the mother, I don't know what happened. I guess the devil just got them you know what i'm saying yeah this this darkness just over you know evil no there's actually though we don't understand it all by the, i mean how horrendous would that be as it's a terrible. parent but we have hope yeah and we have purpose because all things work together for the good who love. of those who love who christ, christ called according to spur we don't understand it but there's purpose behind the trials and tribulations absolutely that and that, that like you said that's what that's what animates our hope. There's another thing, too, that I think our hope can be tied to is this. Think about this. And MacArthur said, John MacArthur said this in his sermon on the kingdom. He says that, thank goodness the gospel is not affected. The gospel going out in Christ mm. church is not affected by any good laws or bad laws right. that are put into place by politicians. Right. Thank goodness yeah. that the gospel, the kingdom of God is not of this world and it will it will progress regardless of persecution, regardless of bad, evil laws that are go against the church, and regardless of good laws that go with the church as well, it will persevere. So, what, just, what, what you're saying there is the the Senate, the Congress, the state government, the the local government, the White House, yeah. all of these things do not factor one iota in God's kingdom. Absolutely. And what do you say? I will build my church, and the gates Absolutely. of hell can't prevail. Isn't that good news? I, that. It gives me so much hope. <laughs> so, so let's bring not, it. So, hey, bring we it. live here. Yep. Okay. Let's not focus on this kingdom. Mm-hmm. Let's let's. So, what do we focus on? I was reading this verse just a few minutes ago. How how do we do this? How do we get this joy and how does all this work? We got to stay focused. Colossians three uh, one through four says, therefore, if you've been raised up with Christ, Blake, keep seeking the things above, Blake, where Christ is mm. seated. See that the right hand of God set your mind, Blake, on the things above, not on the things on the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed in him in glory. And that's another good promise right there, sealed by the Holy Spirit, hidden in Christ, in God. I, that, Nobody, <laughs> look, rest in that, have joy in that, yes. persevere in that tribulation. No one can snatch you out of his hands. That, that verse will preach. Absolutely. Man, that's good. Well, look here. Paul goes on, and these are not disconnected. I can't help but think these are these are all tied together as his flow as this as he's being uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit and, and and he's writing these things down. Paul goes on to say, persevering in tribulation, yeah. right? You just said that. Rejoicing in hope enables us to be patient in affliction. Right? Yours says patient in tribulation. Perseverance, same thing right here, right? We're persevering. We're being patient in our afflictions. This tribulation, right? Patience is hope in a different clothing, if you will. Yeah. It's the ability to wait calmly as the Lord works everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. And and note that in the Greek here, it, it's interesting. It just read this. This is how it re- reads is in hope, rejoicing, tribulation, persevering, prayer, devoted. That's the original. That's how it is. It's just interesting how that the language is to say that we are to endure within the midst of deep and serious trouble. Yeah. This tribulation here. Right to the believer. That's who he's speaking of. It, it, it's there's an, there's your, there's your passage. P- hey, pastor, who says we're not to have tribulation? Paul says persevere in that tribulation that you will have. It, it's important in practical New Testament imperative. Paul says persevere. When, when the Spirit enables us to perseverance, the Spirit enables us to not simply bear up under that stress feel, 
but we're to su- or and to survive the things that we're going to go through and grit your teeth and bear it. That's not what it means. Just we're going to bear through this. But the Spirit enables us to continue through that trial, through that tribulation, and be useful. Useful. I said youthful. Useful mm-hmm. within the kingdom of God. Yeah. Through that. Yeah. That's what we're to do, right? Despite those things. Paul's calling us to manifest this in our Christian life today. Yeah. It, to the to the Romans, but to us today as well. Yeah, a part, it, it's all done. You cannot do, look, th- th- we do it, it's active, but it can't be done apart from God. That's it. From the Holy Spirit in our lives. So we're responsible to to do the things to, to persevere. Nobody's going to persevere for us. That's something we do. We can't do this apart from him doing this. You know, for the, you know it goes back to the, the fruit of the Spirit. We have these things that are within us, and to live the life out that we're called to live is is done by the spirit uh john 6 63 it is the spirit who gives life the the flesh profits nothing the words that i've spoken to you are spirit and life so so we do it but it, it can't be done apart from from the holy Absolutely. spirit charles uh, spurgeon said this by perseverance the snail reached the ark yeah isn't that good yeah uh that's samuel funny. johnson said great works are performed not by strength but by perseverance. Yes. Think yes. about that. I think about my son and, and the town that we live in. They got a, they got a, a, a football team. They're they're pretty good. They're real little. Yep. They have a couple of big folks. Yep. But they have brutal practices. I mean, they just they practice and practice, and, and so their success is. You know when their success happens in the third and fourth in the quarter. third and fourth quarter because they they they're persevering now this ain't a great illustration (laughs) but i'm just saying they persevere through through that you know uh of course they most of the time they win so there's a good prize there (laughs) but but wouldn't wouldn't it be neat that they won every game we've been promised to win every game in christ everything we go through as a believer we 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 at the end we win all things every Thing. Work for the good of those yeah. who love him. And even though the harder things. And again, these two things are tied together. Rejoicing in hope and persevering in tribulation. The former enables the latter. We persevere because we rejoice in hope. Right? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Romans 5 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, that's us, we have peace with God, praise God, through our Lord Jesus, through whom also we have attained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we exult, super rejoice. Mm-hmm. Right? There's that word, in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also exult, super rejoice in what? Tribulations. Let, let me read this verse, and then I'm going to shut up because you you said some things before, and you've got a few minutes to do it that were, was really good, and I think that the listener needs to hear this. But let me read this verse, uh, Acts 14, 22, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. So there's a purpose yes. in trials. There's a tri- purpose in tribulation. What's the purpose yeah, the purpose is is to bring about our faith, to 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 prove our faith. Prove our faith. That's wow. what First Peter says. Yeah, yeah, we're to prove our faith. Think about this. In in when when First Peter when Peter's writing this to the to in in, in this, this is a wonderful book. It, it, you should read this going through tribulation. But remember the context. All right, Nero. Mm. Right, this Brutal. narcissistic, uh, power crazy, hungry emperor is going through and he is ravaging Christians, right? Because it's fun to him, right? He's just burnt down his city and now he has to blame it upon the way, right? The Christians. And so he's doing this and they're being blamed for this. And Nero is, he's held as the first great persecutor of Christians. And and, and here's what, here's what Peter says in the midst of that. He says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his great mercy, has caused us to be born again. That's interesting. To a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable. It's undefiled and it will not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God. We're protected by the power of God for the faith through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Verse 6, in this you greatly rejoice. Here we go again. It's a a theme through the apostles. Greatly rejoice. Through what? 
through the perse- per- the persecution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He says, in this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, just a little while, if necessary, you've been distressed by various trials. So that, here's the thing, the proof of your faith being more precious than gold. Repeat that. Yeah. The proof Proof? of your faith, not the faith, but the proof of your faith. Oh, that's interesting. It is, is what's precious than gold. Mm. Not just your faith, but it's the proof. What proves your faith is more precious than gold which perishes through tested by fire, the, the gold, may be found and result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly would je- would rejoice with joy ex- inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So the audience of the, of the, the writing here has not seen Christ, but they love him. They love him. They rejoice in him. They believe in him. It, it, it's amazing. It, it is amazing what Peter's saying here is, is. He says, through these trials, through these trials that you're fixing to go through. In fact, some of you I'm talking to are widowers. Some of you have lost your children. Some of you lost your husband and wives and grandparents because of Nero. And, and he says, rejoice in it. He said, because of God, because of the salvation here. Look here, these trials and tribulations, they will endure. They actually lead to something. Yeah. They, and that, that is, we are being sanctified in this, which produces character, which leads to more and more hope. That's what it is. We become refined in the fire of tribulation. We become pure as Christians with the fire trials of this world. We are to meet tribulation with a triumphant fortitude, and we can only do this because of the hope that lies within us and the spirit mm. that has regenerated us. Our, our faith must be owned. It must be internalized, and it must be assessed to know that it is real. We don't have much time left, I, I, very, very little time, and we, we got to come back to this because there's so much more to be said about this faith through persecution. But Paul says here that we are to rejoice, be rejoicing, ever rejoicing in our hope in Jesus Christ. And in fact, if you don't have Jesus Christ today, there ain't much to hope for at this point. The only hope you have is, is that you just hope that hell ain't real. But God has said hell is real. Mm. So if you have not placed your faith in Jesus Christ today, you need to do that for your... He is the only sure hope. He is the anchor of our souls. And you need to place your hope in Jesus Christ. So not only do you persevere in tribulations, but you have salvation and you will see Jesus face to face. That is your hope. Okay, so the believer has hope in the world, trials, tribulations, suffering. Yeah, you know, he's got these things, but he has hope in Christ. He has a great future, and he can persevere through that. The lost person who rejects Christ, this is their best life now. They do have a hope that's just as sure as the heaven hope. It's a hell hope. That's it. So if you put your trust in Christ, follow him obey him repent turn from your sins Amen. you can uh you can have this hope the but hope. anyway we're out of time and we we got one more thing <laughs> prayer and it's not gonna happen hey so Pray appreciate you us. watching tune in to live or go to livesongradio.com yeah. you can watch previous episode episodes we're on tv in the mid-south channel channel 14 but we got some information on our website about that so we appreciate you tuning in and we'll see you next week for another edition of Live Song Radio. You can follow us on Facebook and YouTube. And if you want to continue to study throughout the week, check out the resources available on our website at lifesongradio.com.